What's up, YouTube? My name is Clickwood, and I'm back again with another video. And today, guys, what we're going to be doing is doing NFL pickums with me and my friend Project KSL or Dustin, who is also a member of the Fantasy Football Swagger podcast. You guys listen to that every week. And what was that? Member. Yeah, you're a you're a founding <laughs> member of the Fantasy okay. Football Swagger podcast. Uh, I know you guys like to listen to that every week, but we thought what we would do is continue to give you guys some other fan, uh, football topics and. Uh, not necessarily focused so much on fantasy, although I'm sure that'll somehow sneak in here every once in a while. But uh, what we're going to be doing, like I said, is doing picks for each game. We're going to start off with the Thursday night football game, which is set to kick off as we're recording this what, in about an hour. Um, Something so, like that. yeah, so what we're going to do is uh, we're going to talk about it. By the time that this video goes up, the game will have already been played most likely, or at least be in the process of being played. So uh, you guys will know how stupid we are or how smart we are very, very quickly before we do. So uh, hopefully you guys enjoy this. But uh, let's hop right into it. Let's start off with the first game, Thursday Night Football. We have the Indianapolis Colts at the Houston Texans. Uh, Dustin, this game, pretty interesting, actually, because it's a division game. Uh, yeah. Potentially two of the teams that could be competing for that division title. Yeah. Yeah, I, I certainly think it's a two-horse race in the AFC South. They're, that whole division isn't that good, though. I, You know, the Texans had a big lead on the Colts last year in a primetime game. I remember when Case Keenum was their quarterback. Yep. And then they completely, like, squabbled the lead. Andrew Luck came back. As good as the Texans' defense has been, I still have more faith in the Houston or than uh, in the Colts. You know, they're, Andrew Luck's on a really good pace. I can't see any way the Texans really win this game convincingly. I think the Colts yeah. will probably win it by around 10. Yeah, it's going to be a tough one. Um, you know, I, I was expecting the Texans to be a lot more competitive against my Cowboys. I mean, although the game was only a three-point game this past week, but... Um, it never seemed I, that close until the very yeah, end. Yeah, it really yeah. didn't. It seemed like Dallas kind of manhandled them throughout most of the game, or at least the game, I don't know, it didn't ever feel like Houston was going to win. Ryan Fitzpatrick so, had a zero in fantasy until like the fourth quarter. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> and that's the other thing, too. At this point, uh, Ryan, uh, Ryan Fitzpatrick has thrown more interceptions than he has touchdowns, He's which terrible. is never a good thing. He's just a terrible um, quarterback, yeah. It's, it's unfortunate they put themselves in that situation. but Right, right. Yeah, you know, it, it, and, you know it's, it's one of those things where it's like they drafted Clowney with the assumption that he was going to be able to play the whole year and that hasn't panned out so far obviously uh in hindsight maybe they go with a quarterback but um you know none of the quarterbacks look spectacular at this point so you know what what can you Portal really would say be a nice fit for them with what they have around him but it, it's tough because we haven't really could seen be, but, i still think Clowney yeah i still go one right and and i mean if you're a team like houston and i mean last year they were the worst team in the league i mean it's hard to blame them for for thinking long term versus just okay what's the position that's going to make us win the most games this year yeah. so maybe there's a better quarterback prospect i mean you probably know this better than i do yeah. guys that are coming out next year that maybe they could find themselves in a good opportunity to draft yeah i mean mariota will come out next year you know there's a few others that you mm -hmm. know quarterback prospects always go get bounced around so much true true right prior to the draft but i mean at mariota will definitely be a lock for the top five and then but beyond that it's just um uh uh it's tough to really see themselves in a situation where now they traded for Ryan Mallett. Like, it's kind of hard to see themselves, you know, picking high enough because I think they'll probably be like an eight and eight team to really get, you know, a top yeah. quarterback. But that's what they yeah. locked themselves into. I mean, we kind of talked about it when I said I didn't think I should pick Clowney because it's contracts with Watt, and then sure enough, Watt signed mm -hmm. that just monster deal. Right, right. So it's gonna yeah, be they're gonna have a lot of money out. invested in that position yeah, in a couple gonna, of years here, yeah. especially if Clowney resigns. We're we're looking at just incredible cap numbers. Well, and especially if they hit on a quarterback next year. Yeah, they can. You know? And then the, one of them has to leave. Then, effect, then right. essentially either Clowney or Watt is leaving at some point. Right. Well, uh, you know, I think the the one interesting thing about this game, obviously, is that it is a road division game. Indianapolis, um, not – I mean, I think they're – I'd say they're probably a Tier 2 team in the AFC right now, uh, with Denver yeah. being probably its own tier <laughs> okay, at this yeah, point. Okay, fair enough. Okay, yeah. I, um, say, I don't put them below, like, San Diego or anything. No, I put them at the same level as a San Diego um, and, and probably, like, a Cincinnati. Yeah, but I too. think. But I think that Houston is a better team at home, obviously, than they are on the road. Uh, they'll have the advantage of the the crowd being loud. And, I mean, gosh, they traveled so well for the Cowboys game, which is another thing that we need to talk about. But, <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Anyway, though, uh, I am also taking Indianapolis for this one. So let's move on to the second game, and that is going to be the New England Patriots at the Buffalo Bills, another road division game uh, for a team that is probably, I mean, the favorite 
the team favorite is on the road. So that's yeah. pretty rare, actually. But, uh, yeah, so the New England Patriots, obviously, they came out and whipped the crap out of the uh, the Bengals this past week. And not many people saw that coming. I certainly didn't after the Bengals looked very, very good. But, uh, you know, the Patriots reminded us that, yeah, they still have that in them if they can from time to time wow. put it together on offense. Yeah. But, I mean, they still always have that capability. Rushing. Yep, yep. Yeah, no, I, I'll tell you what, for this week, I'm, I'm picking the Bills. Straight up, I'm picking Woo, the Bills. Woo, baby. Yep. Yeah. I don't think the Patriots – I think what the Patriots did last week is a big anomaly. The Bills' defense is tough, man. They have guys who can get after you. The Patriots' defensive line still isn't very good. You ain't rushing for 200 yards on the Bills to make Brady look confident. I'm not trusting that defense. They're coming off a big momentum win after beating the Lions, coming back from down in that game. Kyle Wharton played way better than EJ Manuel had the whole year. I think at home they're going to really, really want this game. I expect the Bills to win. I really do. I think the Bills win this game. That's a bold prediction, my friend. Um I mean, I can definitely see where you're coming from on that. I mean, the Patriots have not looked like the Patriots of the past this year. Uh, like you said, it could be a letdown after a big momentum win this yep. past week. Uh, it, it has the, it, it honestly has the recipe for for upset written all over it. So I definitely see where you're coming from there. Your whole theory of uh, you always give me this one whenever we talk about Denver. You say Drew Stanton isn't going to come in and beat Den and beat Peyton Manning. I know, but I, Tom Brady I, ain't that much better than Kyle Orton, man. Come on, <laughs> you hate him so much now. I don't. He's I, okay, not good. Okay, Kyle Orton though. Come on. I, okay, maybe Kyle Orton, but like I don't think that he gets that type of pedigree now, where it's just like, oh, sure. dude, so and so isn't beating it's Andrew Luck yeah. or Aaron Rodgers. Like, nah, dude. Right. Tom Brady's about as good as maybe Matt Ryan. Maybe. Okay. Yeah. So. I, no, I don't give him the type of pedigree. And I think the teams yeah. around him, I like what the Bills have around him more than the Patriots have. I agree. Uh, the whole thing to me is that I don't see the Bills putting up very many points. So it comes down to if the Bills' defense can actually contain them. And if the Bills' defense can contain uh, can contain the Patriots' offense, then this game is probably going to go to the Bills. I think, though, if the Patriots put up 20 points in this game, I think it's going to be enough to win. And I think that there's a good chance that they do that. I think there's a good chance that Gronkowski gets into the end zone. Um, and, you know, if, if they're able to run the ball even moderately effectively in this one, I think that they've, they've got a good chance. Yeah, I don't think but, they run the ball. But the pass rush is real with, yeah. with that defense. So uh, it could be a real tough day for the Patriots because they have not played well on their offensive line this year. And I think that's the biggest issue they with their a, team, to be honest. The, the Bills have a real similar recipe that the Dolphins have for beating the yeah. Patriots. Very and true. It's just great, crazy pressure. You know, they pressure, play, play yeah. man on the outside a lot of times, you know, and I just, yeah. I don't think that they're going to be able to run the ball. And if they can't run the ball, nobody's going to respect Tom Brady. So I don't think they win the game. And it's in Fair Buffalo. Enough. The crowd's going to want it. They're going to be hyped as shit. I think the Bills are going to win this game. Fair enough. I'm glad that we're having some uh, disagreements early in these games because uh, last week we only had one disagreement. But We'll have more. Yeah, yeah, I'm thinking so. So next game we've got is another one that, uh, and this is the team that you chose in the game that was uh, a mix, the one that we, we picked different teams on, and that is the Cleveland Browns who host the Pittsburgh Steelers. Cleveland, huge win this past week, a momentum win, uh, definitely one where they looked like they were down and out. I was texting you before halftime <laughs> laughing about the fact that the Titans were up, what, 28-3 to 20 3 at halftime? Yeah. And uh, Cleveland came back and won that game. Absolutely astonishing, an amazing comeback. Brian Hoyer definitely looks like he's got some skill. Well, who told you about that? Who's promoting Hoyer on this last week, huh? You were? Huh. What can I say? What can huh. I say? I, You know, I, I was on that Tennessee Titans Jake Locker bandwagon. Is, you know, if I would have known that Jake Locker would – no, I'm just joking. No, I would have still picked the Titans probably. But, um, you know, that game was just a complete disaster. Both the teams aren't very good. But well, You know what's funny about the Browns is there hasn't been one game that's been decided by more than three points for that team this whole year. I know. Cardiac they could, cats, They, they could easily friend. be like, what, 5-0? and oh? I mean, easily. It's, it's kind of yeah. crazy to think. but Or 0-5. Oh yeah, seriously. Yeah, it's, it's kind of <laughs> Kind of crazy. They're just one of those teams, and Pittsburgh has not looked very good the past few weeks at all. Very true. You know, very Jacksonville, true. the Bucks. They lost to the Bucks. They almost lost yeah. to the Jaguars. That game was close. And this it, is a road division game as well. Yeah, it's third see, one. You know, I I really really want to pick the Browns because I've been I've been on yeah. Hoyer. I I think that they're a better team than some people think. Yeah. But the fact that Joe Hayden ain't playing like Joe Hayden, I think Antonio Brown's eating him for lunch. Yeah. So I think I'm gonna pick. Yeah, I think I'm gonna pick the Steelers. I, even the, even though they have defensive injuries, I still think that Ben Roethlisberger. I trust him to get go in there and get this game done. Antonio Brown, Marcus Wheaton on the outside, Le'Veon Bell. They have more offensive firepower. I think they win in a they real do. close game on the road. 
They do. Uh, yeah, the, the, I think the offensive firepower, like you said, is the big difference here. Now, I will say Ben Tate coming back for Cleveland this yeah, past he week. Big. He looked great. I mean, yeah. he looked he looked every bit like the guy that we were talking about going into the preseason as far as being like a, a guy who's the unquestioned starter in that offense. And, um, you know, and, and despite the fact that Terrence West and Isaiah Crowell looked decent in it when they were in for him, uh, they, they went right back to Ben Tate. Yeah, no and question I think, about it. And I think Ben Tate is going to be a solid producer for them for the rest of the year. He's going to give them consistency in that offense, and he's going to give Brian Hoyer the chance to go deep. Now, the real question is, is do they have any guys who can realistically beat the Steelers' defense deep? And I think that that is the thing that they don't have right now. They really don't have any deep threats. Now, people might say, you know, a Travis well, Benjamin Travis or Benjamin something like that. But, off, but probably not consistent. Yeah, right? but the problem is that Travis Benjamin is going to be on the field for – 10 snaps right you know so i mean yeah you you can say that and he might be able to beat him deep ones but um the consistent threat of it i don't think is really there right now so yeah. i think it's going to be tough for them to beat a lot of quality teams now they might be able to beat your tennessees and and your jacksonvilles and those type of teams but man i'm just i'm not a believer right now in the cleveland browns um i do think obviously I'm, I'm a little higher on them this week than i was this past week but i'm still going to take pittsburgh in a, like you said in a close division uh road game it's going to be a big win for pittsburgh if they're able to do it because that's going to put them uh tied for the lead in the division if cincinnati does fall this week again yep so all right, uh, next game that we have on the docket is the Green Bay Packers as they head to Miami to face the Dolphins. Now, Green Bay, their offense has looked a lot better over the past few weeks. Are you believing in that offense, or are you thinking that they're going to have trouble here with Cameron Wake and the rest of that Miami defense? Well, I, I, I mean, I'm not believing them to have some crazy elite offense. No, I think I think it's been better. I think that it's, you know, hitting close to what it could be. I don't know if it'll be that right. way consistently because we'll get the Vikings on a completely mentally defeated Vikings team every week. But Right, right. I, I do think it, it'll be, you know, that they'll, they'll get it going, keep it going at the pace, I guess I should say, and... You know, Joe Philbin was with the the Packers for a while. It seems like he might have something there. You know, he might have a good mm-hmm. game plan to have, play against Aaron Rodgers this week. Like you said, Cameron Wake, Jared Oderick. You know, they have some pieces that can cause some some stuff up front. The Dolphins have actually been really good this year to allowing n- not very few TD passes. So very true. I, I think that that could play a role. But I, I still, I, Ryan Tannehill. It seems like the quarterback situation's in serious flux right now. We don't know if No Sean will play this week. It seems unsure. Yeah. And I, I, it's tough for me to say that I think Aaron Rodgers is going to go on, go in, in Miami and lose. So I, I think I'd probably pick the Packers to win this game. Yeah, I'm going to take the Packers as well. Um, what I will say is that I think Miami can run the ball in this game. Yeah, definitely. And, I mean, Green Bay, I mean or Green Bay defense is terrible. It really is. And if they can run the ball effectively and they can control the clock, they have a chance in this game. Now, if they try and go out there and they try to outduel Aaron Rodgers with Ryan Tannehill, your boy Tanny, uh, it's just not going to happen. Yeah. So I, I like their opportunity if they're able to run the football. Obviously, we we don't know that as we're making our picks here. But if no Sean Moreno is back, I like it a lot better. I really, really do because I think that he's going to be able to grind the ball a little bit more than Lamar Miller can. But Lamar Miller has actually looked pretty good uh, with with he's no shot being out. Missed, so, yeah. so, I mean, it, I think this game is, is another close one. Um, there's a lot closer games this week, I think, than there has been or than there was in this past week. So yeah, last week was not very many competitive games, really, it seemed right. like going into it. So. Right. And, and I mean, we were right on most of the games, but uh, let's uh, I, I'm going to go ahead and take the Packers in this one as well. I think that they've got the momentum going. Their offense is clicking right now. And we just don't know if Miami is going to be able to run the ball effectively in this one. But I, I, I do think it's going to be fairly close. I think that uh, Green Bay is probably going to struggle a little bit more on offense in this one than they have in the past few games. So I'm expecting something like a 24 to 21 win for the Green Bay. Yeah, that sounds about right, too. I was going to say something like 27-20. Yeah. Yeah, we're real close. All right, so next game, uh, going back to the NFC North, uh, Minnesota Vikings hosting the Detroit Lions. Now, this one, I think, is very interesting. Both these teams in serious turmoil. Um, You know, the Vikings, obviously, with the Adrian Peterson situation, they have not looked good without him. Uh, They've they've had a couple of games where they looked okay running the ball, but uh, Matt Asiata definitely is not Adrian Peterson. He's averaging less than four yards per carry on the year. Uh, Jarek McKinnon does have some fire, but, you know, it's he's not touching the ball enough to be much of a factor. Calvin Johnson is going to miss this game. 
game almost certainly at this yeah. point. Um, now he basically missed this past week's game, and Detroit was still able two. to. Yeah, and, and Detroit was still able to move the ball very effectively. Now the big question is: is are any of the Detroit Lions running backs even going to play? Yeah, Joyce mean, probable. So I mean, is he now? Okay, yeah, Joyce Bell's probable. So Joyce Bell will likely get most of the snaps. Okay. Yeah, I, I think that their their opportunity to win this game is going to come down to if they can they can run the ball as well because um, I mean obviously Matt Stafford does have the ability to get the ball to the other receivers. Uh, you know, Golden Tate had a great game this past week, but I just don't think on a on a every week basis they're going to be able to pass the ball all over the field without Calvin Johnson on the field. Yeah, probably so, not. I mean, the Golden Tate had you know Golden Tate has been good for them. Frankly, I think he's like top five. He was right good now for Seattle. Guards. Yeah, frankly, well, he's been a lot better here though. He's getting a more. Yes. I mean, he's he like is. I said, he's top five in receiving yards right now. You know, he's doing a lot mm-hmm. better, a lot better than people thought. Yep. So, you know, with, with that and, and also um, Joyke Bell, I'm still a big Joyke Bell fan. I think he'll have a good week this, yep. this or a good game this week versus Minnesota. Minnesota will get back Teddy Bridgewater. That'll help. But I still don't think they're going to have enough to straight up out duel Stafford if Stafford plays a good game. Stafford's real hot and cold, though. So if he goes out there and plays like shit, I don't see why Minnesota couldn't win. But I don't think he will. So. I think I'd have to pick the Lions to win this game. Are are the Vikings going to have Teddy Bridgewater back? Yeah, for sure. He said he's gonna okay. Play. All right. So I, I mean, I think that adds a little bit more excitement oh, he's a lot to this than game. Ponder. Yeah, he's a, he's a lot better than Ponder. Yeah, Christian so. Ponder looked absolutely awful and reminded everybody why he shouldn't have been a first round pick in the first place. Yeah. But uh, you know, I I do think I'm going to go with Detroit for this one as well, just because I don't think Minnesota has the firepower to keep up with them. But I do like their chances better with Teddy Bridgewater. So it's going to be interesting. It, I, I hate taking all these road division games because it's yeah, just a trap every, every single year. Yeah. You know, uh, home teams in the division. I mean, it's not that out of the question for, you know, a, a, a San Diego to lose to an Oakland on the road. You know, it, it happens all the time with and maybe not that ex- specific example, but, you know, a good team losing on the road to a bad team yeah, in the division. And, and so, frankly, I think the Vikings are better than people think, too, because I think they just have a lot yeah. of just natural talent on that team, too. And I think getting Teddy back will be big. But again, I just think getting back Joyke this week for the Lions, I think that that, that Lions team is so hard to run on. So it's going to come down to Teddy Bridgewater. Yeah, and I just don't know if I trust him to straight up win a game versus a guy like Matt Stafford in the Detroit offense head to head. Right, Detroit's allowing seventy four point four yards per game on the ground, which is a, an excellent number, absolutely excellent. Whereas Minnesota one hundred and twenty one point eight to put it into comparison. So, uh, and Minnesota is also allowing significantly more yards through the air. So. Yeah. The defense doesn't really match up in this case. Detroit, it's kind of interesting because Detroit has actually gone from being one of the most offensive-focused teams in the league yeah, to now they're, they're at the point where their defense might be better than their offense. Yeah, certainly I mean, without really, you can make the case. So, I, I mean, it's kind of crazy. I, I really think Detroit, if they get all their pieces healthy, which is, you know, who knows if that's even going to happen yeah, this year. But if, if they do get all their pieces healthy, Detroit is a serious threat to almost every team in the league. Yeah. So I like Detroit this week. Um, got another. I hate to say this, another close one. But yeah, yeah, I do think Detroit is going to probably win a close game here against the Vikings. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if this one ends like you know like twenty to seventeen, something like that. A, a fairly low scoring game for these two teams, just because they're missing so many pieces on their offenses. Yeah. So. All right, let's move on to the next game, and that one is going to be uh, one that you were talking about before we started the show. Uh, a game that somebody had predicted that the New York Jets were going to be the upset of the week against your Denver Broncos. Who was that, and and why did they make that asinine prediction? Uh, Pete Schrager said that they're going to want to win it. Pete, Pete Schrager of Fox Sports says that they're going to want to win it for uh, Rex Ryan. Like I guess they wouldn't want to win last week versus San Diego for Rex Ryan. Right. You know, that that's a real legitimate thing. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's just so unbelievably stupid that someone could make that claim. The Jets are in complete turmoil right now. Yeah. Quarterback's been benched, he's not benched, missing meetings, Rex talking about getting fired. It's just they're in complete disarray right now. And I've been calling for Rex's head for a long time. I hope still, this is the year, my friend. They still just have a train wreck for a secondary, and I don't if you have that bad of a secondary, there is no way you're gonna beat Peyton Manning. Right. There is just no way. And there's well, Denver will be too. without Monty Ball. Yeah. In this one, but I don't. I mean, we probably, talked about this on our by subtraction. By subtraction so. <laughs> yeah, we talked a little bit about this one on the fantasy podcast. I don't really think it makes a big difference with their offense. They're healthy as far as their receivers go. West, with Wes Welker being back yeah. and Marius looks amazing. So I Julius mean, Thomas, it's Manuel Sanders. They got all the weapons firing right now. Defense is right. playing better too the past few weeks, like a lot better. So 
it's gonna I, be brutal. This I, game's gonna I be a can't blowout. See anyway, it's not more than a ten point game. Yeah, this game's gonna be a blowout. I don't know what that guy's talking about. So yeah, I think the spread is like ten points right now for Denver on the road. Right. So, yeah, I, mean, I, I got Denver in this one as well. Yeah, uh, without easy, question, so. does he need to be talked about? Yeah. All right. So next game on on the line is uh, Baltimore at Tampa Bay. Baltimore, definitely a team that can be very, very hot or very, very cold. And Tampa Bay, a team that has been giving better teams fits over the past few weeks. Yeah. What do you think about this game? I mean, is this one closer than it might look like on paper? Probably. I, I don't expect a blowout in that game. I really don't. It'll be in Tampa, so it'll be, you know, you assume it'd be pretty warm down there. Yeah. And it, yeah. It, it's just the, the Ravens are coming off a complete just terrible offensive game versus Indianapolis. So it's a good defense, not great defense. Right. And, you know, my the Glenn has played a lot better for them recently. You know, it's kind of crazy to think he didn't start the season off. But I expect he's Steve Smith to get it going again. I expect, yeah. you know, the Ravens defense is for real. It's going to give the Glenn and company a lot of trouble. I just I don't really <laughs> see a lot of ways that Tampa Bay could realistically win this game. I think it'll be uh, yeah. Baltimore by probably about a touchdown. Yeah, I think so as well. Um, it's it's interesting we're taking so many d- uh, road teams in this. Yeah, Both of us are. I'm telling you right now, at the end of this, we're going to be looking back on this like, damn, we should have we shouldn't have taken so many road teams. But yeah, no, I, I'm going to take Baltimore as well in this one. Uh, you're like you said, the Glenn has looked a lot better. Mike Glennon, as we we call him, the Glenn. Um, he's, he's looked a lot better than Josh McCown ever did in this offense. Uh, Vincent Jackson was back this past week looking like Vincent Jackson. So I do think that there is a chance here for Tampa Bay, but like you said that they're going to have to try and stop that pass rush. And, you know, you've, you've got so many guys on the Baltimore offense that can put up big points. Now they've got three decent running backs, all of them looking fairly good. So I, I'd like to I'd like to pick Tampa Bay in this one, but I am going to go with Baltimore. And uh, I, I do think that it's probably going to be by about a touchdown, like you said. So, yep. all right. Uh, next game that we've got is my Tennessee Titans. Oh, gosh. <laughs> uh, they're hosting the Jacksonville Jaguars in the shit bowl of 2014. Oh, so yeah. this one is uh, definitely, I, I think that this is probably the least important football game that will happen all season. Because well, they have, well, they have a rematch. So, I mean. <laughs> but, but that one's going to be in, that one's going to be in Jacksonville and Jacksonville, like, I don't know. I, I don't know. I, I think both of them are going to be completely irrelevant, but I think Jacksonville will be a little bit more competitive maybe on at home. Maybe. I don't know. They're they're both just such garbage. Teams. I mean, I I could see Jacksonville winning this game. That's the thing. They could. I, I could easily see it happening as bad as Tennessee's looked. Yeah. So, I mean, I guess I'd pick the Titans because they're at home, and I don't want to pick another road team. Yeah. But it, it really coin flip. I I'm really not confident in that at all because I could easily see Blake at- Bortles going in there and getting the win. Well, let me ask you this: if if in a hypothetical world they're playing in a neutral field, who are you taking in this game? Because I'm probably taking Jacksonville. I'm, I'm not gonna lie. As bad as they've looked, man, they're the they're zero and five. But I might take them to beat Tennessee. I mean, Tennessee's what one and four. So I mean, yeah, they're, they're both terrible, similar. But... I mean, it, yeah, I mean, I, I might take them. I mean, Bortles has looked, you know, he's had his ups and downs, but he, you know, he's gonna get a win eventually. Yeah, I don't see any reason why it couldn't be this week, but I still I don't want to pick another home team or another road team, so I'm gonna pick a home team. So I guess I'm gonna roll with the Titans this week. Yep, I'm gonna take the Titans as well. Toby Gerhart, two point six yards uh, per carry this year, yeah, and it ain't dreadful. gonna happen. Yeah, he's, he's just dreadful. awful. So, all right. But Gus <laughs> Bradley's changing the culture. Next game is one that I alluded to uh, a little bit ago, uh, and that was well, actually, it was the the reverse. But um, no, it wasn't. No, San Diego at Oakland, mm-hmm. and uh, I think we're both gonna take San Diego here, right? Yeah, I mean, probably without yeah. question. They're looking good right now. Having said that, though. San Diego lost in Oakland last year to Terrell right. Pryor, so they're not right. above losing this game. Right, exactly. And I think that that's um, it's a good example of what I talked about before. Road division games are tough for almost any team in the league. Yeah. So, uh, I mean, this one, it, it wouldn't be all that surprising to see Oakland win, but given the fact that San Diego is currently leading that division at 4-1, and <sighs> one, um, I think you have to take San Diego. Yeah, They've looked pretty good. They they beat Seattle. I mean, you definitely would pick San Diego. Yeah, I mean, yeah. it'd be tough to make a case to not pick them. But right, I mean, Tony Sperano's first game, maybe he'll pull some shit out of his hat. You know what I mean? 
Who knows? Good. Maybe I'll pull something off crazy. I'll run just straight wildcat Darren McFadden offense and win the game. Who knows? <laughs> that would be fun. That would be a lot of fun. I didn't even think about that because that was uh, – he did that in college a lot. Yeah, that and, was. I mean, that's where Sperano basically based yeah. a lot of his stuff he did as Ronnie Brown off of was the McFadden yeah. offense at Arkansas. So he yeah, might play Felix Jones that a little and, bit. Felix Jones, Darren McFadden. Peyton Hillis. Uh, Dirty. That Arkansas backfield. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, he might. It might happen, but I still think the yeah. Chargers will win. The Chargers defense has been pretty good. Brandon Flowers they is a hell of a pickup for them, so... Brandon Flowers looking like the Brandon Flowers that the Chiefs fans always talked about. Looking but like never the Brandon had. Flowers that never really happened in Kansas City. Uh, <laughs> right. Goes to San Diego, leaves that shit team, and is good all of a sudden. <laughs> all right. So next game is, uh, I think, a little bit of an interesting one. Uh, Arizona, who recently lost their undefeated record to your uh, to your Denver Broncos. Oh, fuck out. Yeah. yeah, they got blown out. But, I mean, that wasn't all that surprising. But they are going to be hosting the Washington Redskins this week. Who do you got in this one? You know, I've been paying attention to see what's been going on with Carson Palmer, and they said he threw the other day, but he was only at about, what they say, like 30 to 40% of his normal velocity. So basically he's throwing it like Alex Smith. So <laughs> that's probably This not is good. the Kansas City Shots <laughs> podcast, by the way. <laughs> that's probably not a good sign. Drew Stanton has a concussion. They said he's unlikely to play. So Logan, Logan Thomas has been taking the first team reps. Because yeah. of that, I'm taking the Redskins on the road. I think they go in there, they get a win. And I, I think that the Redskins defense is pretty much just going to key in on Andre Ellington the whole day. I don't expect Logan Thomas to just beat them consistently. Considering the Redskins all have Alfred Morris, Kirk Cousins is clearly a lot better than Logan Thomas right now. True. I, I think that I'm going to pick the Redskins to win on the road in this one. I'm going to go the opposite here. I definitely hear where you're coming from on that. I don't think either team is going to score a lot of points in this one, if, to be honest with you. If Palmer plays, if somehow his, his nerve in his arm gets better and he plays, I'm definitely picking Arizona, but I don't yeah. think he's going to play in it. Third string quarterback versus Washington, I'm still going to, I'm going to pick the Redskins. I don't think the Washington defense is particularly scary. No, it's not at all, but I think it's good against so, the run. And I think that I yeah. think almost any defense is going to want a third string quarterback playing them. You know what I mean? Yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, obviously, you don't go in and you expect that Logan Thomas is going to throw for 300 yards and three touchdowns. But, um, I mean, if he throws for 150 and a touchdown and doesn't throw a pick, yeah. I think they have a good chance. I mean, 150 and a touchdown, that's all I'm asking for. Yeah. I think they have a chance of winning this game if they do that because Arizona's defense is still very I, good. I think the biggest key to this game is Andre Ellington. If Andre yes, Ellington can go out there, give him in third and shorts, you know, have a good yards per carry – Catch some balls out of the backfield, have a good game. I Make, definitely if think he the breaks, can win. If he breaks one run, yeah, exactly. in this game, he takes it to Arizona the can win this game. Yeah. I think he's gonna have around hundred total yards. If he has around hundred total yards, I really like the Redskins, the Cardinal shot in this game. But yeah. I think the Redskins are gonna know that, and I think yeah. they're just gonna key him the whole game. So, like I said, that's the reason I'm picking the Redskins in this one. Fair enough. Um, Redskins defense only or they're allowing 114.6 yards per game on the ground. Arizona defense, 76.8 yards per game yeah, on the ground. So Alfred difference. Morris has a tough matchup here. But, uh, yeah, I, I'm going to go ahead and take Arizona. This is another one that we disagree on, but I think we could both see the other sides of the arguments on this yeah, one for I mean, sure. I'm not, like, calling you crazy or nothing. Right. All right, so then we've got Chicago at Atlanta. So two oh, pretty man. solid passing games here. Um, we still don't really know if Brandon Marshall is going to be fully healthy going forward. I mean, these guys, he and Alshon have both just been, like, injured and injured and injured. And, um, I mean, it's it's tough. It's tough to really predict what's going to happen in this game, I think. Yeah, I mean, where would you say? It's in Chicago, you said? No, it's in Atlanta. Oh, man. You know what? Yeah, Alshon is, fit, is finally healthy, finally. They're going to have Martellus Bennett. They're going to have Matt Forte, Jake Cutler. You expect to have a better game. And, and, and that's a tough game because Atlanta's defense is so bad and so is Chicago. Oh, they're atrocious. So it's just going to be a matchup of really good offenses versus really bad defenses. So you kind of flip a coin, but <laughs> Matt Ryan's hard to beat in that dome. You know, yes. Atlanta is a lot better at home than they are on the road. I think they'll Absolutely. have better success. I think Julio Jones will have a really big game. I don't see Roddy White have a nice bounce back game because I don't know who's going to be covering who. Kyle Fuller will get one of them. So, and Kyle Fuller, well, as good as he is, has been, he still is, you know, he still allows catches and then he makes up for picks. He's reminiscent of, like, a Tim Jenny. Yeah. So, I, I think I'd pick Atlanta because they're at home. I'm not going to be surprised if Chicago do win this game, though. Yeah, I'm going to take Atlanta as well. I think that Atlanta, like you said, plays significantly better at home than they do on the road. Chicago 
they're they're such a Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde team because they can come out and look like just world beaters in one one uh, game or even one half of football, and then the second half they look like complete garbage. And it's like, yeah. what happened? Yeah. What happened when you guys went into the locker room that made you guys just like lose all your confidence? I don't know what that is. I don't understand why it's happening like that, but it seems to be happening more than on more than on one occasion. So I'm gonna go with Atlanta. I do think this is going to be probably the highest scoring game of the week or maybe the second highest scoring game of the week, but uh, definitely a, a very high scoring one. And if you've got fantasy options in this one, play everybody. Yeah. Play everybody. <laughs> Even Steven Jackson, maybe. 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 Easy. Maybe. <laughs> All right. Uh, next game is one that I'm excited for because my Dallas Cowboys have an opportunity to go into Seattle and knock off the defending Super Bowl champion Seattle Seahawks. I think it's not. You better pick them. You better pick them. No, I'm not. I'm not going to pick my Cowboys. Come on. But the Cowboys are four and one. I think that the Cowboys have uh, very much overachieved for what they are this year. Their defense has looked pff, twice as good as I thought it would, which yeah. isn't saying much. But they've been it's quality. Been better than people thought they'd be. Yeah. I mean. Yeah. It, you know, it, it's funny because a lot of people are going to immediately dismiss this game and say, you know, there's no way, but. It, if you it, the one thing that you can say about Dallas is they have a monstrous offensive line, and that offensive they do. line you'd assume would be able to match up phys- physically with Seattle's defensive line. So yep. if Demarco Murray can play even half to what Demarco Murray's playing, I think it could be a competitive game. I really do. Yeah. I don't expect a blowout in this game. I really don't. Um, you know, unless Demarco Murray goes out there and averages a yard of carry, then you know all bets are off. But right. if they can stick to their game plan, run the ball, you know, set the tone a little bit with that, I don't see why they couldn't win. But it's in Seattle. They've lost their one time in two years. <laughs> you know, they're playing good right now. They they always play amazing at home. That defense is going to be flying around the ball. Yeah. And I, I don't see – I just don't see them winning a 60-minute game in Seattle. So you got to pick the Seahawks to win this game. Yep, it's going to be very tough for the Cowboys. Uh, Seattle only allowing 62.2 yards per game on the ground. Very, very tough. Obviously, DeMarco Murray leads the league in rushing by a pretty significant margin. So if there's somebody that can break into that total, it's probably him. But like you said, it's going to be very, very difficult. Seattle does have an excellent defense. But one one stat that I did want to bring up here at, on this uh, specific game, 20.8 points per game allowed by the Seattle Seahawks defense, 20.6 allowed for the Dallas Cowboys. So point two in favor of the Cowboys defense. Cowboys defense better than Seattle. Okay. I'm I'm gonna come out and say it. No, okay, I'm just joking. Fan. No, I'm totally joking on that. But that those are the real numbers. So I mean Dallas's defense, like we said, has played significantly better than what we expected. And uh, I do think that there's a chance that the Cowboys win this game, but I'm definitely going to take Seattle in this one. Um next on it on the the list here Sunday night football we have the New York Giants heading to Philadelphia to play the Eagles another important division game here two of the better teams in the NFC East who do you have in this one and why you know that's another game that's it's I went back and forth on just looking at it and I really yeah. you know I, I looked at it and you know I ended up I ended up picking the Giants because Ooh, I, I, on the road. I think they're better right now than the Eagles are. I think they're firing more complete. You know, Nick Foles, yeah. you know, you can make the case. Nick Foles has been the, the, the shittier quarterback in every single game they played. He has not been good this year. True. So True. It, it's tough. LaShawn McCoy is just not looking like LaShawn McCoy at all. The yeah. Giants, Jason Pierre-Paul right now has been phenomenal this year. He's finally having his balance back season. Yeah. Amu Kamara and DRC on the outside is going to be tough for guys like Jordan Matthews, Riley Cooper, Jeremy Macklin to win consistently all game. Those are two good corners. And the Eli Manning Giants offense, you know, I think Andre Williams will have a good game. The Philadelphia offense is just trash. Our defense, excuse me, is just trash. It really is. I, yeah. I think that having, you know, Beckham, Cruz, Randall with Eli Manning in this new offense, I really think that they're going to go in there. I think they're going to get a win to get first place in the division. Whew, it's going to be tough. Um, this game, I, I mean, like we talked about, I think that this one is just another example of uh, currently, if I think these teams are playing at a neutral field, I'm taking the Giants right now. Yep. Um, they're a hot team. They've got, like you said, the offensive firepower, and they're starting to get healthy, at least at the receiver position. Unfortunately, they are going to be without Rashad Jennings, who has looked amazing this year. But Andre Williams, I think, it has a real potential to step in and really not lose that much of a beat. Yep. I think that he has some serious skills. Uh, I like what I've seen out of him so far. But... I am going to go ahead and take Philadelphia in this game. 
just because I, I think at some point their offense has to get better, right? I mean, like, at some point, LaShawn McCoy has to crack three yards per carry. I mean, you, right. you think so. <laughs> right now, he's averaging 2.9 yards oh, per carry. He averaged like 5.8 last year, too. I mean, that's literally half of what he had last year. Yeah, so. it's, it, it, I don't, I mean, I don't know. It, I, I think that you would think they will, too, but I don't think it'll be against the Giants of a better defense than people think. I don't know, man. Um, Giants defense is allowing 99 yards per game on the ground, which is a good number. Uh, it's not terrible, I should say. Philadelphia, I mean, all the numbers would indicate that the Giants should win this game. But I just think at some point, Philadelphia has to step up and win. Uh, they have to make a statement win. Um, and I think that Chip Kelly is definitely going to look at this game as one that is hugely important for his team's chances to make the playoffs. If they don't win this game, it's going to put them in a big, big hole. So I think that they really, really have to, to get themselves up for this game, win at home, and then look forward from there. So I am going to take Philadelphia, but uh, I, I really would not be that surprised if the Giants end up getting the win here at all. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm not going to be surprised if Philadelphia wins either. It's just one of those things where I'm looking at it and all the factors in my head say, don't overthink it, pick, pick the better <laughs> team, you know? Fair enough. Fair enough. Um, can't really argue with that logic. But final game of the week is going to be Monday Night Football. San Francisco heads to St. Louis, and I don't understand why this is a Monday Night Football another, game. Another just phenomenal Monday Night Football game last like, week, Seattle, Washington. Why Why not do Chicago, Atlanta? Why not do, uh, you know, a Denver, New York Jets? Like, what are you doing having this crap game on Monday Night yeah. Football? There, there's no realistic chance that St. Louis wins this one, is there? I mean, you wouldn't think so, but the way Kaepernick's played, you know, he's not above going out there and throwing four picks. You know, it's mm. – I, I don't know. It's a, it's a battle of really bad quarterback play right now. The 49ers defense has, has looked a lot better the last couple games. You assume that they'll be the reason that they win this game. You know, they'll probably hold San, sorry, uh, St. Louis to very few points, I'd imagine, anyways. I could easily see something like, you know, 17-7, 49ers win, and I wouldn't be shocked at all. Fair so enough. It, yeah, it's yeah. it's a it's a shit game. You pick the 49ers because they're just a better team. Yeah, they on on paper the 49ers are definitely a better team. Although I want to point out one thing that I thought was kind of funny. Uh at this point in the season, 49ers have played 5 games, Rams have played 4 games. Austin Davis has 16 more yards passing than Colin Kaepernick despite playing a, in an entire less game and not to mention he didn't start week 1. So, um, I mean, it's it's ugly right now in San Francisco as far as the passing game goes. Kaepernick has not been what people expected him to be. Uh, yeah, Jaws he's made, claiming he, he's regressed is what's so yeah. funny. He and Cam Newton both have, I think. Well, Cam Newton, you get some type of exception because of they, they only have really, you know, Kelvin Benjamin, Greg Olson. His, he has the worst offensive line in football protecting him. I give yeah. him some sort of a pass. Kaepernick has Stevie Johnson, he has Brandon Lloyd, he has Anquan Bolden, he has Michael Crabtree, he yeah. has Vernon Davis, he has well, an elite offensive of. line. He Vernon has Davis Frank hasn't really Ford. played, but yeah. Even You're whatever. Right. He has yeah. elite skill positions and an elite offensive line around him. He has no excuse. He's in a phenomenal situation for a quarterback, and he still just sucks. Yeah. And not to mention, their defense is still playing very, very well. Yeah. It's not like the 49ers' defense has just dropped off. No, and, and the they're... defense is going to get better, too. I mean, they get Bowman, they yeah. get Alden Smith coming back. It's just that offense looks so bad. Yeah, they're, the 49ers are allowing 21.2 yards or points per game, 282.8 total yards per game. So that is an exceptional number. Um, I do think that they win this one, but, man— Kaepernick has to step it up if they want to have a chance to win this division or at least even make the playoffs. I think it's going to be tough at this point for them to win the division with Seattle playing as well as they are. But, man, they they really need to step it up if they want to make the playoffs. Kaepernick's got to be better. Yep, absolutely. So, so with that being said, guys, that is going to wrap things up on today's video. Um, hope you guys enjoyed it. Hope you learned something. If you did, make sure you press that like button. Don't forget to leave a comment. Let us know what dumbasses we are, how stupid we are for not picking your team, uh, how smart we are I'll for picking your those. team. Yeah, those are my favorite comments as well. Um, just because, you know, they're, they're my favorite team and screw you for not picking them. Um, but anyways, guys, like I said, that is going to wrap up today's video. Thank you guys so much for listening. We hope you enjoyed it. And we will talk to you guys next week here on the NFL Pickums with Clickwood and Project KSL. Bye-bye.